Now, when it comes to preferences for Photoshop, every version has been a little bit different. This particular video is going to be showing you the current version of Photoshop CC. I also have a Photoshop CS6 as well as a CS5 version of the preferences on my website if you would like to see one of the older versions. For this particular one, let's go under Edit, Preferences, and then General. This is falling right off the screen, but again, Edit, Preferences, and then General. That opens up this dialog box right here. And starting with this very first one, I'm just going to hit upon the ones that are most important. So to me, the first thing I do is turn off Export Clipboard, primarily because if you have something copy and pasted, and in Photoshop, they can get quite large. You click on the desktop to go check your browser, and it has to export that data into some other format for the operating system to actually understand it. So since I'm not directly working between Photoshop, InDesign, and Illustrator in quite that way, I just turn it off because this will just save the system extra processing later down the road. Now, the next thing that I use is Zoom resizes windows, completely up to you. But basically, all this means is if you have a floating window of the image, when I zoom in, I want it to go big. And when I zoom out, I want to make the window really tiny so I can take it and drag it up into the corner. You may not do that. And this setting is dependent on one of the other settings in the interface tab, which we'll talk about shortly. But for me personally, I turn that on for Zoom resizes windows. I turn off flick panning. Basically, flick panning is the type of thing that happens on the cell phones. If you click and drag, and then it goes zzzz, and then it slows down, kind of like if you use the scroll on your mouse and go zzzz. For me, I want to move something somewhere and let go and have it be there. Basically, flick panning will just keep scrolling. I find it very irritating, and I turn that off. And the rest of the options here, largely, you don't have to worry about. The next one down is interface. Now, as I've said before, I am not a big fan of this dark gray interface. I don't like it. It puts me to sleep. So what I'm going to do is click right here, and suddenly the whole thing wakes me back up again, and I'm working in a neutral gray environment. As a beginner, this doesn't necessarily mean anything to you. However, the point is that with the dark gray, it's impeding another tone while I'm trying to work on my images. This is a nice neutral gray and my colors are my colors and it's easier on the eyes to absorb. Now for me personally, I hate tabs. Well, you may ask, what are tabs? So I'm just gonna click okay for a moment and I'm gonna open up an image in Photoshop. And now notice that it opened it up with this right here. This is a tab and this is the grayness that happens around it. And as you zoom in or out, it doesn't care. It's kind of locked into this particular area right here. And I don't like it because notice, one, my palettes are in the way. Okay, I'm trying to zoom in on something at a percentage that works for my screen, and it's half being covered by palettes. Here, watch. Okay, I, I can't move this out of the way, and I can't even move it out of the way. It's just locked in place. So I don't like that at all. I prefer to work in windows instead of tabs. So if I click this and drag off and let go, this is a window, which simply means that I can actually make it fit to size by hitting control zero on the keyboard. And then notice that it fits it just big enough, but not actually underneath any of my palettes. If I open up a palette and I hit control zero, it shrinks it to size inside of the live area. Now notice that this window itself got smaller or the window itself gets bigger. This goes back to that other setting that we were talking about previously, which is right here, zoom resizes windows. So I leave that on. Then I come over here and I turn this off. It's totally up to you. Many people like it on. I, for one, absolutely hate it. By the exact same token, I need to turn off the floating document window docking, which simply means it's going to want to dock into tabs automatically, and I'm turning off tabs. Now, one of the new functions inside of Photoshop CC is this one right here, Enable Narrow Options Bar. Largely, you don't need to know about this as a beginner. Okay, so that covers all the things that you really need to know inside of Interface. Let's click on Sync Settings. Sync Settings are for Adobe Photoshop's cloud. So basically what this means is if you have tool palettes and things and keyboard shortcuts and things that you want the way that you want, you can actually sync it to Adobe, go to another computer, and then load up those settings again. 
Simply, you see this, you log in as somebody, and then you sync it in. All right, moving on, we have file handling. Now, most of these settings have been the same for a very long time. The most important one that was introduced in CS6 is this one right here, automatically recover, save recovery information every 10 minutes. So what you want is to be sure that is checked and then save it for every 5, 10, or 15 minutes, depending on the size of the images that you work on and the computer processing power in the hard drive. But basically what this means is if you have a power failure or Photoshop crashes or something like that, you have a 50-50 chance of it actually opening up again. Now, I know it's supposed to open up every time. However, I'll just be honest, my experience has been pretty hit or miss. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. I don't know. It is what it is. I'd rather have the safety net than nothing at all. Turn this on and set it for a time and let it go. As if you didn't have enough places to find camera raw settings already, here's another one, camera raw preferences. So once again, with all the rest of these settings, you can just leave them alone. Next, we have performance. And this is the memory inside of your machine, and you can either give more or less of it to Photoshop. Generally, the basic settings work, but you can crank it up more if you like. I wouldn't go any higher than 85%, but to each their own. This next one over here is largely an old school problem. And uh, basically, the video cards weren't as fast as they could be, and the processors weren't that fast, and the hard drives weren't that fast. So to compensate for that slow interaction with Photoshop, when it opened up, it would create different caches of different zooms. And it would then use this information to allow you to zoom in faster and out faster. However, with today's computers, I haven't seen this be a problem for at least 10 years. So generally, you can just leave all these settings alone as well. Down here, however, scratch disks you may want to change. If you have a computer that has a single C drive or on a Mac, just a single hard drive, um, then you're kind of stuck with the single hard drive. But the more hard drives you have, the more options you have. And in this case, I'm on a PC and my C drive is not showing up because it's an SSD drive, but it's very, very small. So Photoshop can't use it because the operating system is using it. So it's giving me the option of the other drives. And these other drives are basically saying D, E, and F because these just happen to be different drives in my system. And I have the choice of whichever one I want. Basically, you want the one that is the fastest and the biggest. If you want, you can click a secondary one or even a third one. So as Photoshop needs more and more space to save different settings and caches and histories and all the different things that it does, you can check these on and Photoshop will use them as needed. However, I use this just for a classroom with very small images, so I have no need but the basic one. The next one over here is graphics processor settings, and this one is saying that it's using my graphics processor. If I were to uncheck this, a huge chunk of Photoshop is now broken. It used to be that just a tiny little bit of Photoshop was broken, but the more Photoshop has evolved, at this point in CC, you uncheck that, bad things start to happen. You lose all these filters and things just stop working. So basically, if this is checked, leave it alone. And you do have a variety more of sub tabs that you can click on. However, we don't need to do that for this video because all the rest of those settings are absolutely fine by default.